Hi and welcome. Uh, after the good response for the Game of Thrones video, I decided to create uh, another, uh, to use another API for another series, namely Rick and Morty, to create this uh, li little uh, fun uh, uh, web app where you can, it's a basically a game where you just press dead or alive and if the, the choice was correct, you get a tick or a cross. Uh, some prerequisites for this are that you have Node and NPM installed in your machine. You can use whatever ID you want, but I, us I usually use uh, Visual Studio Code and also use some extensions uh, along with the in the Visual Studio Code, which I'm going to put in the description. So yeah, um, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to open the Visual Studio Code, do npx create React app in order to create our template React app. And then we're going to wait a bit. And after a while, you're going to have your uh, template React app in your uh, Visual Studio Code. And we can do npm start in order to start uh, this template up to see that everything's uh, working correctly. Yes, everything is fine. So it's uh, it's time to delete some of the unnecessary files that we don't need for, from the template. And after that, we can also delete um, these files uh, from the code. So we don't have any errors. <clears throat> yes. Delete <clears throat> the HTML from the app. <clears throat> Excuse me, today my voice is a bit weird. And let's just test. Okay, we can see app is on the screen, so everything is working fine. And uh, as the next step, I copied some uh, CSS because this is not a CSS tutorial. So I just copied the CSS inside uh, the index.css. I'm going to leave it in the description, of course. And uh, it contains everything from the animations to the, uh, yeah, the backgrounds and all that. Uh, when it comes to the background, I, I use this uh, website, which is called S. SVG, as SVG backgrounds in order to generate this cool background. Um, and of course I put in the CSS. Now, the first thing we're going to do in the app.js is we're going to write the title. And it's basically, we're going to write Rick and Morty game. <laughs> and then I am going to start creating a first component, which is going to be main. And uh, I'm going to create this component so I create it, main.jsx, and then I use my extension to generate uh, that template component. Then I need to import it into the um, up to JS. And yeah, now it should we should see it on the screen. Nice, main is right there. And then we can start manipulating the main uh, component. We're going to put a class in order to have some uh, CSS. It's going to be uh, the container first of the game. And then we're going to put, um, uh, this is a placeholder div for the image, but we're going to change it later to an image IMG element. And then we're also going to put a header for the name. So we'll basically have uh, two, we take um, to information from the API, the name and the image, but we're going to do it a bit later. The extraction of the information from the API. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to create um, a div in order to have uh, inside the symbols, uh, which is going to be the tick and the cross, whether you made the, whether the answer was correct or uh, false. And then I'm going to the fonts, uh, Google fonts dot icons in order to First, uh, I'm going to copy the the tick, the HTML for the tick, and then um, I forgot to insert the link. So I'm going to copy the link and then I'm going to put it in the index.html, which is in the public folder. That's nice. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look for the cancel uh, symbol. And I, I copy the HTML for this and put it right below the uh, tick, the done. And then I am going to, we can, uh, yeah, we can see them, uh, the symbols right there on the screen. 
and then we are going to put some classes on them because we want them to have different colors and all that you know you want a green uh, tick and then like uh, a red cancel or cross uh, symbol so that would be our choice and we can see them there now they're they look better i guess <laughs> a bit and then i'm going to create the container for the buttons uh, it's going to be two buttons one is going to be the alive button and the other one is going to be the dead button and i wrote bottom so i'm going to change that soon <laughs> called bottom alive yep <laughs> Copy for the dead or cancel. Uh, I made a mistake with the naming and I just put cancel in it. So we just change it to cancel, I guess. <laughs> and then I am going to find uh, the API, which is uh, this website, rickandmortyapi.com, and you can see what information we can get from this API image which episode they were first seen, last seen, and all that. And then I'm going to the docs uh, in order to see how to fetch them. So you can see that we have a get request with that uh, URL and for all the characters. And this is for one character. You just put the character slash the ID of the character. So yeah, I'm going to copy that uh, URL as a comment right there in order to have it for later. And then I'm going to I think it's time to start uh, thinking about uh, creating the new the uh, sorry the hook to fetch the data. So we're going to use a hook to fetch to fetch the data. It's going to do us. For, uh, it's going to do it for us. So let's do it. Export const use fetch data. We're taking as input the URL of course, and then the URL of the of the request. And then I'm going to create a new state variable called data in order to store our data in, in it. Yes, and of course, I'm going to import uh, the use state from React. I always, uh, and the use effect because we're going to use use effect also. And uh, yes. Two very important hooks in React. And after that, I'm going to create a function which is going to um, fetch our data. So const get data is an async function because we make a request to an, an API. So we're going to create a constant called response and it's going to be equals uh, away the promise of, of fetching uh, this URL, this API, this information from this URL. And then I'm going to create a const data, which uh, is going to basically um, turn this response into JSON, to JSON formatted data. And then I'm going to set uh, the data that I get to the uh, state variable. Maybe I should have named them otherwise, not both data, but okay, maybe you get the difference. Uh, one is a state variable, the other one is just uh, the data that holds the data uh, for a moment right there. And then um, I'm going to basically create uh, a new state variable in order to have uh, our URL, our request URL. Which URL do I want to send to the hook? And it's basically going to be what um, uh, I copy pasted there, the URL is basically what we had in the comments. And then I'm going to call this hook and with the request URL as a parameter. And we delete that one. And then we go in again in the use fetch data uh, hook in order to create a use effect. We need a use effect in order to call our um, to call uh, this uh, function, this data this get data function uh, when we load the page for the first time. And as you can see, uh, I I am loading the data for the first uh, character. And I am ready to uh, switch from the div into an image element. And the URL is, the source is of course going to be the data.image 
which is basically if you check the network top, you're going to see that the image data.image means that it's a, it's a URL basically to a, and of course the data.name which is going to be the name of the character. And as we can see, we have Rick's picture with the name Rick Sanchez, which is fun. <laughs> and then I'm going to create another state variable because I want to know if the tick is true or false, if I'm going to show the tick basically. Uh, and uh, as if, before we do anything, of course, it's going to be false. And then I'm going to create the same for the cross. And of course, it's also going to be false because I want both of them to be hidden until I make an action, uh, until I make an action, like until I play the game. And uh, yeah. And then I can put uh, the conditional for the tick on the on the symbol on the HTML for the symbol, and I also going to create another conditional for the cross with the cancel symbol. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> of course, if you have any questions about any of this, you can just ask me in the, in the comments. And uh, yeah. It's time to put uh, and click invent on our buttons because we want to have some action, right? <laughs> so I create an on click property and I put inside an arrow function, which is basically going to do a check if the data I got from the API is equals to alive and or unknown because we also have the status unknown. Some characters, you don't know if they died or not. So also, or unknown, data to status equals unknown. Then I want you to set the tick into true because you answered correctly. You, you pressed alive and they are alive. So yeah, set the tick into true So because I want to see it. And all else, set it to uh, cross. Sorry, uh, set, the, set the cross to true so you can show the cross instead for the tick. So yeah, and then we're going to do very, very similar to the dead button. So we just copy and basically we're going to change the if statement. I want you to show me the tick if uh, the character is dead. And of course I clicked dead, <laughs> the button dead. So right now I guess it's time to... Um, I want to, when I'm done, when I press dead or alive and get a, I get an answer, I want to have the next character. So I'm going to create a new a function called reset, which basically is going to set a timeout of uh, some seconds. And after that timeout is uh, done, I want you to generate a random number, which is going to happen from the generate random number function, which I'm also creating a uh, above the component and this uh, function is going to basically uh, you're going to set a minimum and a maximum and I want you to return the uh, a random number between uh, these two numbers so I'm going to paste uh, the math the math uh, the formula because it's not that relevant you can just uh, pause the video and copy this and then I'm going to basically set the request URL into, um, instead for one, I'm going to put the number that I received from the generate random number function. So I'm going to put number there. And I of course I want this to happen after 3000 uh, milliseconds. So basically three seconds. And we can put the reset uh, function below, sorry, below uh, the, um, the if conditional on each of the on click event buttons. And then uh, I think, no, we're not ready yet. Uh, I also want to put a use effect inside the main component, which will basically uh, reset uh, the 
turn both to false, both the tick and the cross to false, because you want them to disappear after a while in order to go to the next character in order to receive the next uh, task, for example. And uh, I want this to run only when uh, the request URL is changing, basically when the reset function is being, uh, is being used, basically. And then uh, I think we're ready to... Oh, sorry, sorry, that was wrong. <laughs> I think we're ready to play the game, I guess. Oh no, uh, I think I forgot to put the... Yeah, you need to put the URL also there because I want this to get the new data when I change the URL, right? So on the use effect, I just put the URL in, in the brackets. So yeah, as you can see, it uh, works and we are ready to play the game. And thank you for watching this video and please subscribe and comment on the video asking me questions. Thank you.